Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Kevin from Hats and Guitars. Uh, welcome. Uh, have a happy weekend, everybody. Welcome to the weekend. Uh, those of you who've uh, been vaccinated and you're able to see your grandchildren and uh, family and grandparents and you know visit other households, people that have been uh, vaccinated. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, my little boy is visiting his grandparents for the first time in long, long time. So that's a beautiful thing. And uh, like I said uh, months ago, there's clear waters ahead. So just keep paddling and we'll get there, you know. So today we're going to talk about uh, some straw hats because uh, straw season's upon us now. Today was a beautiful, beautiful day. The birds were chirping. Uh, the doorman in my building was going outside in the sun. He was like, man, I want to go home, man, you know? It was just one of those gorgeous days, you know? You just, you just kind of like want to sit on the grass or something, you know? You just like feel like doing that, just actually not staying out of the sun. You want to like get some sun, you know? You know about that, right? Like one of the first sunny days of the year. So I felt really good, you know? Nice heat and, and New York's been kind of nasty and really freezing, so. It was really hot, and then a cool breeze would come. It felt really nice. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll hit the beach uh, in a little bit, take a little quick trip out there tomorrow, and just uh, do something nice. We talk about the different types of straws, um, what they're like, and how they compare to each other. Straws are a confusing subject for a lot of people because they don't know the difference between Panamas, what is a Panama, what kind of straws are there, what are my choices, what's out there, um, what's the differences, and why do I want one and not the other. So we'll talk about that uh, briefly. I'm not going to make you wait and sit through a song. I'll get to you know some of the meat and potatoes of it right now. Um, Panama is one of the most popular types of straws, okay? And when you think of Panama, you think a Panama hat, it's kind of like this shape, right? Uh, you know, pinches, bands, it's kind of like an off-white color, a cream color with a black band, right? Sometimes white, sometimes cream. They come both ways. Natural is the natural color of the straw, and then bleached is when they bleach it and make it whiter. Okay, um, they also come in colors, they dye them, they put like a transparent dye over the natural stuff, and they give color Panama too. Difference between Panama and other types of straws, the Panama straw is the one that's hand woven. They weave it by hand, just like, you know, like have you ever seen anybody do needlepoint? You know, it's kind of like a, like a net, like a fishing net, but it's much finer, a mesh and they're taking like a kind of like yarn and sort of making little loops inside of it until all the loops kind of make almost like a rug sort of right something like that but they're doing it with straw they're starting in the middle and they're weaving circles around each other concentric circles it's like a little disc with like straws sticking out of it like a star kind of and they're just weaving around concentric circles and the disc gets bigger and bigger and they, they actually do it by hand. It's done, you know, they take the piece of straw, they dry it, they match the colors. They take the really dark black ones and dark brown ones, we throw those on one pile. The ones that they match up that are nice and creamy colored and light, they put them on another pile and those make the natural hats. The ones that are black and dark brown and have big flaws in them, and, you know, spots in them, they bleach those out white to like an eggshell color, and that becomes the bleached stuff. So you actually get a little bit more bang for the buck when you buy the bleach. It feels softer and stretchier, um, but they don't match the straw. So, you know, it'll feel a little crunchier, a little less weave quality when you buy it natural for the same price. So it costs a little more to match the straw, in other words. Now, Panama hats can be a little bit delicate in this area right here. 
uh, a lot of companies now are reinforcing that right there. So right inside of the crown, not on the outside here, but on the inside, they're putting this kind of protector piece. It looks like a gray thing in there or something, kind of like a, a heavy cloth, like this sort of cloth that you can't rip. I don't know if you've seen that stuff. You know, it's kind of like, a, I don't know, like a heavy tape or something. They put that lining in there, very, very tough stuff. And um, it's, it's super hard. So even if you do manage to crack the straw, it holds it together like safety glass anyway. It doesn't make a hole, it just cracks, you know. Um, they reinforce it there because people have a habit of grabbing them off the tabletop right there. So if the hat's on the tabletop, yeah, I'll show you like this, they, they're going to just grab it there. It's like a little handle. And with the Panama hats, a lot of them, are, they're just delicate. They break there. Okay. There's a lot of advantages to them. Panama, they're going to look the nicest, the dressiest. They're going to be very um, elegant. They have a a natural, kind of an organic quality to them, which gives it a very elegant look. You can tell it's something handcrafted that's very fine. And the more expensive they get, the finer they get, and they look finer. But it gets to a point where you get so expensive that the finest, finest weaves are so tight that they don't breathe. So it becomes like a fine, fine cloth that's just got like no holes in it almost. I mean, they're there, but you know, not really. You look at Panama, it's like pretty solid, but there's little pinholes. When you get to these really tight, tight Panama hats, they call them Monte Cristi Finos. Now, Monte Cristi's, Monte Cristi Fino, or Monte Cristi Super Fino quality. They're special, they have a different type of edge and stuff. They're very, very expensive, and they're so, f they're so fine a weave that when you hold it this far away, you can't even see any weave. It just looks like this solid tan thing and they suck air when you put them on the, the countertop and you pick it up, it actually, it's airtight. So it, it goes like that when you pick it up off like a glass, uh, you know, showcase or something. It sucks it because there's no holes here at all. It's perfectly tight. Now, you say, oh, that's going to block crazy sun. That will really block a lot of sun. It must be great protection. Yeah, it's great protection, but it's also blocking a lot of air too. Okay, and the whole idea is to, yeah, airflow, natural materials. That's why they use stuff like straws and, you know, linens and things like that. Cotton, paper, straw, it's all natural so it breathes. It gets really, really tight. It's almost like you're buying this piece of art or something like that, you know. And um, a piece of art reminds me of this story. But um, Patrick knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's like... Um, so tight that it becomes hot. So, you know, don't think that those hats that are over 1200 bucks and more expensive, more expensive, are the best Panamas because they're not. They're really not. Um, they're just the most expensive. Um, and they're hard to make and they take a long, long time to make, but you'll sweat through it in, you know, one week or one day or one month the same way you will with a cheap Panama. So, uh, if I sweat through something that was, you know, 1500 bucks, I'd be pretty upset. I, I I, can't see it, but I guess if you have the money and you love hats, yeah, I, mean, I have no problem spending like $10,000 on a guitar or three or five. So I understand it, you know. I guess it's not that much if you have the cash, you know. But um, there are hats, Panamas, that I like better. Uh, the stuff by Tessie is very fine. The bleached Panamas that are very high grade bleached, I like. They're soft, they're squishy soft. They don't even feel like crunchy straw anymore. They feel almost like rubbery and soft. Uh, they have this kind of nice moist, almost like, you know, when they break in, you could roll them and stuff. But only the bleached and only the better stuff. Like, uh, I would say, you know, they have a lot of grades on Panamas now, but it's all kind of arbitrary because every company has their own rating system and they rate it amongst their own stuff. So one company will make up grade eight Panama and you know, it'll be this kind of thing, you know, this 200-ish dollar stuff, really soft, bleached, you know. But somebody else will come out with grade 16 and it's not as nice, you know. So it, it's all kind of like what, uh, what company you're dealing with. So ignore those grade things. It's just as arbitrary as like the X system, which really is like, only good amongst one brand you know you could compare one Stetson to another Stetson 
but you can't compare a Stetson 6X to a 10X from 1950. So in other words, you know, in the same rating system at the same time, you can, it, it works, but that's it. Um, everybody makes up their own sort of system. So getting back to Panama, so that's one type of straw. I'm not going to say it's delicate. It's more like it's in the middle. It's not the most delicate, and it's not the most durable either. Um, it has like one rough spot right here where it tends to crack. So if you lick this problem and start keeping your hats upside down, that problem goes away. So it's non-existent. So just keep your hat upside down, never keep it this way, and you won't grab it by the point and crack it. So Panamas are, are great. I love them, and they, I think they're fantastic. It's a great way to go. They're, they're lightweight, and most of all, they're versatile. They're the most versatile hat out there in a way because you could wear a Panama with a pair of shorts, um, and you could wear it with like a, a really nice business suit and tie, you know, like a super expensive tailored suit or something. Um, and it's appropriate. Uh, of course, it depends on the Panama you're talking about, but you know, a classic Panama, you know, you can wear it really dressed down or really dressed up. People wear them with bathing suits and stuff and shorts. Um, they also wear them super dressed up. Um, I believe they're versatile. They're also versatile in the sense that they're kind of like a little bit flexible, but they're a little bit light. They're kind of like right in the middle. And they have, they have class and they have, they're handmade, you know. They're woven by these guys in Ecuador, okay? And then that piece of straw that they weave, sort of like a circle, a hat body, then that'll go somewhere else, like Italy or someplace, and the Italians will put it together into a hat. Then that goes to the United States, where we sell it at JJ's. So this thing went all over the world. It was actually, you know, woven by hand in some room by some guy, you know. It's pretty, it's cool. I, I, I think it's really nice, and it's super elegant. I love Panamas, but there are other things out there. Um, the hemp hats are infinitely stronger. Um, if you find that you're going through Panamas every few years and they're not lasting you long enough, um, it's an alternative. The hemp stuff um, and the myelin hats. Myelin is a kind of a weave, and uh, these days most of them are made from hemp, but it can't be made of other stuff. It can be made of paper straw, it can be made of linen, flax, all kinds of stuff. Um, even uh, plastic, you know, but uh, that's not common. It would be something really cheap. But it's a, it's a particular weave. They make a braid, and the braid comes off this huge spool, and then kind of like by machine turns into like a, you know, a straw, like into a, like a, the weave. Let me show you what it looks like. It's almost like a ribbed in a way. It has this sort of like rib sort of, okay? So this has a stretchy action to it. Let's go a little closer. Okay, no effect. So these things are really, really dope. You cannot do this stuff with a Panama, not at all. I recommend doing none of this stuff with your Panamas. But your hemp hats, when they get soft enough, you could even roll it up. I'm not going to roll it now because I kind of need to do it against my chest. Okay, I rolled it. No big show off. But uh, these are not crushable hats, but I've gotten mine so soft that I'm comfortable doing that. Um, I don't recommend you guys doing it. But, uh, you know, if you're a knock around kind of guy and you're not really about perfection, then, you know, give it a shot. But you got to wait till it's really softened up. I've had this a couple of years already, you know. Um, hemp does not break. I can try to squeeze this, crack it, punch it, abuse it. Um, it doesn't even affect it. It's uh, it's really, really strong. This is the hemp asher. It has a leather sweatband. It's the short brim. What they do is they give you a tip sticker here. Tip sticker is made out of their linings. Okay, the idea is that so the top of your head doesn't stain this and make uh, sweat stains. Um, that's the only part that's really going to touch is there and around the sweatband. 
So you can always change your sweatbands, you can change this band if that gets sweaty, and you can change the tip sticker. Those are the parts that are making contact with the body. They don't pull, put a full lining in there because a full lining would be just too hot. Um, this is supposed to breathe, so it's breathable. There's a zillion holes in it, and it's made out of straw. Um, the leather sweatband is great because then when you start sweating, it blocks it way, way longer than a hat with uh, a ribbon or a cloth sweatband. Most Panamas don't have leather. Um, some people feel leather is a hot, hot kind of a thing to wear in the summer. I personally feel that without it, I'll sweat up a hat way too fast. So, you know, I deal with it. And um, I like the fact that I can dry it with a hanky and keep it just bone dry. You know, leather can be just totally dry. You keep a uh, bandana with you and you just, the front, you just dry it up. Um, but if it's cloth, it stays wet and it's like got the bacteria and like things growing in it. And it's just kind of like, you, you know, it's like you're putting this wet hat back on. It's kind of irritating your skin, you know. I like leather. I like having a leather sweat. Most summer hats don't have it. Some do. Leather is infinitely heavier though. Listen to this noise, you ready? It's it's heavy. You know, it's like, it's pretty much like taking a very light hat and putting a leather belt inside of it. So it adds a lot of weight. The sweatband itself might weigh as much as this hat. It's hard to say, maybe a little less. Uh, Wes, you're texting me during video. Stop doing that. That's why I'm beeping, guys. I should have put on Do Not Disturb. Okay. Um, hemp is way stronger than Panama. It's obviously a lot sportier, though. Panama hat can be very elegant. It can be one of the most elegant things in the world. It's got a mystique to it. If you guys ever seen that movie Hannibal, um, the Anthony Hopkins thing, where he's uh, going through the piazza and he stabs that guy, that guy's supposed to kill him, you know? He's got this Panama hat on, this big white Italian one with the high crown. That's the Italian stuff that's bleached that I like. We have a hat called the Tuscany and a hat called the Lumbra, which is the three inch brim. They're probably nearly sold out by now because they're like four year old models, but we ordered a lot, you know. But uh, those, that's the hat that he wore in that movie was the Tuscany, which is like a, you know, maybe a two and a half inch brim, high crown. Um, it's the same stuff as the Borsalino. It's the same cut. They made the Borsalino uh, straws. I think they still do. So a Tessie is basically the same thing, just without their logo in it. Um, same factory, same people make it. Just has a silver Tessie logo instead of a gold Borsalino. But um, Tessie stuff is awesome. And I love all the bleached Panamas that are high-end like that. Um, you know, it's hard to find them, the higher end, softer bleached Panamas. Um, a lot of them are natural, because that's what people want when they spend a lot of money. But I'm not talking about a lot, a lot of money. I'm talking about like in the 250, 275 to 350. You know, they're expensive, but not crazy expensive like some Panamas. They're really nice. Um, that's my favorite stuff. Not the, you know, over a thousand dollar Panama Monte Cristi Finos with the little you know, feathers cut in them, and stars and arrows. They have them with like little, uh, almost like a doily, like open work, open weave, which is really cool. You get a cool cross breeze. Some of them are solid on top, or they have like a little star pattern on top for, for air. The only problem with those Monte Cristis is if you're bald, they leave a suntan pattern on your bald head, like a doily sort of geometric thing. You know, so you can get like an arrow suntan or like, a star, it's pretty funny. Um, but um, they're very hard to find, the open weaves. I don't know if we have any of those stashed anymore. We might have used all of them. But we have a few very nice Monte Cristi bodies stashed upstairs for somebody waiting to make a, you know, a really high-end hat one day. You, uh, you call, you can speak to Ida, the owner, or you could speak to Van, the hat maker find out what's involved in taking one of their very, very special uh, super fino bodies that they have uh, stashed upstairs, which is basically uh, Ida's collection, and turn that into a hat. You know, we can do it for you. The thing with Monte Cristi's is a lot of people, most people want the edge. 
they don't want to cut the brim and put a like a, a welted edge or something they want that Monte Cristi edge so you gotta sort of get the brim size that you get so that's the thing with them unless you want like you know some kind of like a bound edge or something like that then they could cut it and get any width you want but that's the weird thing you gotta go by the, the width of the brim on that particular body you can't just cut it to size like most hats but um, they're not my favorite my favorite is really the mid-priced stuff um, I love the hemp hats that's what I wear uh, I wear a lot of cotton buckets too but uh, the hemp is that's my thing I think it's a little little bit heavier but it definitely breathes it's not quite as light as Panama but the difference is just very very little um, like the difference between having a leather sweatband and not something like that so um, I recommend the hemp stuff a lot you know the new one the Chelsea is awesome if you could get it now they're running a lot of crazy sales 30 percent I think March code and they have 25 percent off I think everything in the store and they just move 50% of all the blue and burgundy hats like the Cyrus, the Madrid, the Seville, um, the Cordoba, all of those Spanish hats from Rocher that we make custom in either navy or burgundy. I think we over ordered or something. We have too many and they're trying to blow those out instead of the thing at like 250, they're like 125 now. So that's a good deal if you like navy or burgundy, you know. 50% off. I uh, might imagine when the COVID uh, zombie apocalypse thing starts to subside that the sales will probably kind of, you know, dry up too. Well, they'll go back to the way they were. We would do an occasional 25, you know, for holidays and stuff. Um, but um, it's your mail orders and enthusiasm and our enthusiasm together, you know, from on this side of the screen and that side that's keeping JJ's uh, strong during the pandemic. Um, it's no joke, it's really cool. And um, I appreciate it, you know. Um, I have a, a strong emotional attachment to the place too. I've worked there for 25 years of my life. Um, and the owner is a, a dear friend. Um, uh, the owner was at my wedding, you know, her and her husband, and uh, I know her children too very well. And um, the great people, good people. They run a very uh, well. Actually, she she owns the store. A uh, very very reputable, you know, above board kind of place. And um, it's actually you know even better than the business my dad run, ran. It's like just by the book, everything just legit and cool. And um, she's amazing. So if anybody um, really strove for perfection it's uh, the owner of JJ's and uh, I have a good uh, obviously uh, a motive for wanting to keep them afloat it's my job you know my livelihood puts uh, you know bread and butter on the table but um, I also have like I said a kind of a I don't know emotional kind of spiritual attachment to it also uh, a lot of memories there you know when my, my child was born um, I you know we spent some time there. I was actually running the small store back then, uh, pork pie hatters, but there's just a lot of cool memories uh, about the place and it's a, it's a special crew. There's a lot of young people there and not so young people that uh, are just, you know, very cool, um, cool individuals. And, uh, they collectively uh, equal JJ's, you know, that's what the place is. It's, it's those people, basically. So hemp's a little bit, little tiny bit heavier, but much, much stronger, way stronger. Panama is a little bit lighter, a little bit more delicate. And, um, it's not fragile by any means, but um, it's not as super tough as hemp, but it's definitely way more elegant. It's lighter too. Um, it's classy. It's very elegant. A hemp hat can only be so dressy, you know. Who's this looper work? Am I looping you? Oh, yeah, I think I was looping the entire time I was playing around. That's incredible. <laughs>
all that stuff just got looped. Thank you. 